For today's warm up, I wanna talk just a little bit about how metal beads can really take your designs up a notch. So take a look at this beautiful collar. This is made from mixed impression jasper and bronzite. And one of my favorite things about it is that it's made with some leftover things that happen when beads are made. So those little shavings and things get collected and compressed and turned into this beautiful, really it's a piece of art just by itself. And I love the way that it looks, just even with the graduated stones, even just plain, it would be totally beautiful. But to add another layer to the design and to kind of give your eyes a place to rest, I took a, the same type of collar and added just some eight millimeter beads in between. Now I used some Swarovski so that that crystal really brings out the sparkle of the bronzite and the stones. And you can see how it makes it pop, but it's still pretty subtle. It's a pretty subtle piece overall, you know? But if you really wanna take it up a notch, then add some metal spacers. Because look, that really draws out the bronzite and the beads, and it also just gives your eye a place to rest because we're working in groups of threes. So you know that old rule of odds we talk about sometimes where things in threes are just more interesting for your eye. So you have three different elements. You have your stone beads, you have the crystal beads, and you have the metal beads, and that also gives your eyes kind of a place to rest. It lets the design breathe a little bit, and I think it really brings up the sparkle too. So it really creates more of a professional looking finish. So anytime you're doing bead stringing, you know you always wanna start out with the thickest wire that will pass through the smallest bead hole in your design. So I'm using 018, and I chose a gold colored beading wire so that it will kind of go with my gold colored beads. Now I'm using pewter beads that have an antique finish. You can see that these are, there's one that's a little bit shinier gold, and then I have one that's more of an antique brass. So I have, kind of get that shiny and matte together, both between the beads, the stone beads, and the crystal. That metal just works to bring it all together. Now, I wanna show you kind of a different style of crimping. Okay, this is using a different tool than we normally use. So I'm just gonna slide my crimp bead onto the end. And I should mention, I, I worked on this all on the spool so that I wouldn't have to wind up with extra wire at the end. And also because I wasn't sure if I wanted to use all of the graduated beads in the design or if I was gonna cut it shorter. Um, and not use quite as many, so I worked with my wire on the spool, which sometimes is a good way just to give yourself a little bit more room to experiment. So what I'm gonna do is take my toggle, and I was careful to put smaller beads here at the end so that my toggle bar will fit through the other end. You know, sometimes if you go right up to the large beads, it can be hard to fasten, and it can give a little bit of abrasion there on the wire at your clasp end. So what we'll do is just take the beading wire and place it back through the crimp bead, just like always. And I'm just gonna slide this up so that I have my crimp pretty close to the clasp. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space so that it can fold over if, if it wants to. And I'm making sure that my wires are parallel, just like we always do. We don't want the wires crossing inside the crimp bead because that can cause breakage. Now this is a different style of crimping tool and you'll see it has three little notches here in the middle those are for three different size crimping beads. So I'm gonna aim for the one in the middle because I'm using a size one crimp bead. And this back part right here is the part that creates the crease. So that's the first space that I'm going to use is way in the back. I'm gonna place it in the divot and then I'm just gonna squeeze it gently so that I get my crease there. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back with the center portion of the tool and just fold that over and then just squeeze it down. And that's gonna make my crimp bead fold in half and make it a little bit rounder. Now, a lot of people leave this little extra tail of wire. Um, you can leave it and feed it back through, but it's really not helping you out. Um, and sometimes it can work its way out. So I like to just trim it as close as I can. Just be sure that you're not trimming the other piece of wire too as you cut. Okay, so that's finished on one side. And then of course I would just go ahead and crimp the other end as well and add my toggle ring. And then to do that, I'm just going to push my beads down a little bit, but notice I'm leaving it in this U shape. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my wire here. But if you've stretched it out straight, you could get it really tight, but that's not really what you want with a piece like this because that can cause your beads to flip out all over the place. I wanna sh make sure that the drape of my beads is right, and then I'm going to go ahead and crimp it in place. So first I'll add one of my little faceted cubes here to the end so that my ends are symmetrical. 
And then I'll use my crimp bead. And of course, when you're choosing crimp beads, remember that you can always look at the package of your beading wire or your crimp bead and tell which one you need. So if you're using 018, for example, it says right on the package which size crimp bead and which size crimp tube. Um, if you're using, if you have your crimp beads but you don't know what wire you need, you can look at the package of the crimps and it will tell you what size wire to use as well. So what you'll do is just take your wire, same as before, and place it through your clasp and then back through your crimp bead. And I'm using crimp beads just because they're a little bit less noticeable in the design and it's going to be snugged up right against my crimp or my last bead there. A lot of times when I'm using a adding a clasp, I'll use a crimp tube instead so that it has a little bit more surface contact. But in this case, it was a conscious decision that I wanted it to be a little bit smaller. All right, so we're just going to tighten this up. And then make a tiny little loop here at the end. I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more. And then I'll come back. I want to make sure again that my ends are parallel so they're not crossing inside of my crimp bead. And then I'm going to use my crimping tool and I'm just going to come in with that very last spot and squeeze it together. And then I'm going to use my middle spot to fold it over. And that's just a gentle squeeze. And then we're going to go ahead and trim away any extra wire here, just being really careful. There you go. So just being really careful that you don't trim off any extra wire. So let's take a quick look at these last couple of necklaces that I made up. And this is just to show you the difference between adding metal beads with the Mixed Impression Jasper or using the set of three together, the crystal, the stone, and the metal.